Peter from cyclingexpress.com here today to talk about nutrition. If you're like me, you've had an experience of poor nutrition on the bike, riding along, powering in fact, and feeling good. Then all of a sudden, the power fades. You feel a little weak, you've got nothing. Day over, you've bonked. Without going into too much detail, your muscles are fueled by three energy systems. As cyclists, we're primarily interested in the aerobic system. This means to keep your legs turning, you need oxygen and carbohydrates. The oxygen is everywhere and depending on your VO2 max, you can get as much as you need without thinking about it. The carbohydrates, however, can only be supplied consciously through eating. There has been a whole lot of research devoted to exercise nutrition and the science behind it. The majority of which can be boiled down to this. For cycling beyond about an hour's time, a cyclist should aim to consume between 60 and 100 grams of carbohydrates per hour, depending on the intensity. This means for every hour of racing or training, you need to consume up to 100 grams of carbs. Fortunately for us, this doesn't need to equate to carefully weighing our food like Lance used to do. There is an entire commercial industry devoted to getting this right for us. So let's have a quick look at what this looks like for the average cyclist. Pretty much all cyclists should be using some type of electrolyte drink which would usually equate to about 30 grams of carbs per hour. This means that the remaining 70 grams will come from the variety of foods and options available. The majority of cyclists I see are eating some variation of gels, bars and fruit, most commonly bananas. So let's see what 100 grams of carbs looks like in these options. Each of these groups is approximately what a cyclist needs to consume each hour there on the bike. Some of these options take up more room than others this may influence your selection for longer rides where you need to carry all your nutrition with you. This final group is a combination I am most happy with. There is something with a more solid texture and obviously gels which go down quite easily. A big factor in choosing my nutrition is the flavour of a product. I seem to develop a particular palate when I'm riding and find it hard to get excessively sweet flavours down. Obviously preference of flavour and texture are very individual. But given how important it is to consume energy on the bike, Knowing what works best and encourages you to eat is an advantage to any endurance athlete. This has been just a very basic look at nutrition for cyclists and I encourage you to experiment to find what works best for you. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at cyclingexpress.com.